Hello. There you go. Okay, great. Okay, I'm going to just get the recording going and turn this over to you on this most most auspicious day of Shilpa Pads Vyas Puja. Okay, well, good morning, evening, afternoon, as may be the case to everyone. Shinandota Vuki Jai, Shila Prabhupada, Akibha Mahamotava, Ki Jai Vyas Puja. Jai. So I didn't intend to speak too too long this morning, but um, we'll see where we go um, with the discussion. Uh, today is the Nandotsava. And of course, we always felt Prabhupada's disciples, it was then felt probably grand disciples and others as well, it was that it was so auspicious that Prabhupada was, was uh, born in on the on this day, the day of the uh, after John Must me, if you will. Um, it's kind of the day after John Must me, but it's in very many respects the day of John Must me at the same time, because Krishna is born at midnight and one minute later, it's today. And today is the day in which the festival in the Braj Lila, uh, festival of Nanda, Nanda Utsava, Utsava means festival. The festival of Nanda was uh, performed. So I'm gonna um, refer the discussion to a couple of verses in the Bhagavatam that um, entered, uh, in which Nanda Maharaj is uh, showcased, if you will. And that with regard to uh, his becoming aware that his uh, that he has a son, something waited for uh, by him and to show to all the residents of Braj for a long time. And we'll go into that a little bit, discuss the verses, and, and then um, see if somehow out of that we can segue into a few words about our... Um, Srila Prabhupada and his contribution and so forth. Again, this is, he appeared on this day as well. So doubly auspicious for us. Um, but the verses from the Bhagavatam I'm going to uh, discuss are from the, must be the fifth chapter of the 10th canto. And um, there are the first two verses. Nanda Svatmaja Utpane Jatalado Mahamana Ahuya Bipran Veda Gyan Snata Suchir Alankita Vachait Va Swastiyanam Jatakar Matma Jasivai Karayam Karayamasa Vidivat Pritri Devarjanam Tata. Sukadeva Goswami explains that Nanda, on the other hand, erupted in ecstasy when his son was born. His was a son who was bliss itself. Nanda witnessed the birth of bliss, and bliss corresponding with the noble mind of Nanda that nonetheless expanded his broad mind, taking it to new heights and melting his already soft heart. Overwhelmed by such bliss, he called for the Brahmanas conversant in, with the Vedas. Having already bathed and adorned himself with Vaishnav Tilak, dressed and decorated, with ornaments suitable for the occasion, pure in mind, he made them recite mantras for prosperity, perform the Jata Karma ritual for his son in accordance with the Vedic conjunctions and perform worship of the devas and the forefathers. Srinanda Maharaj Ki Jai. So a word about Nanda for the pleasure of the Vaishnavas and for the pleasure of Krishna in general, uh, would be in order. 
and um, of course his name literally means uh, bliss. And for us, um, really, he is the perfect uh, father figure. I mentioned this before, but uh, his parental love of Krishna is such that it is exceeded in excellence only by that of Yasoda, whose uh, Batsalya, by contrast, is described at length elsewhere in the Bhagavatam. It comes up again and again. And as I often refer to it, the, uh, the Vatsalya uh, center of the 10th Canto, which covers three or four chapters, is, is very much centered on um, Yashoda's um, Vatsalya. So, um, so here we have, in a couple of verses, a focus um, on Nanda Maharaj. And um, as I say here, he's uh, the excellence and intensity, if you will, of his Vatsalya Bhav in um, all of the spiritual sky is exceeded only by that of um, Yashoda herself. Um, she, of course, as a mother can experience the ninth sattvika bhav of her breasts uh, flowing with milk in ecstasy. Um, but um, as I mentioned, he is the ideal uh, uh, father for us. And, um, you know, uh, we may have been disappointed by our own father and uh, we may be some of us disappointing fathers ourselves to our sons and daughters. But here uh, the Bhagavatam seeks to remedy that for us, not merely by citing an example of how we could be a better father, which would be a good, good lesson to learn from Nanda Maharaj, but moreover, um, it addresses the problem of fatherhood that we've experienced from one side or the other, as I mentioned. and inviting us really to sit at his feet and serve him um, as gopas and gopis relative to the roles, their respective roles in the, uh, in the Leela drama. <clears throat> I've, I've, I've emphasized this before, but it's worth um, underscoring that um, um, Nanda and Yasoda are like the paradigmatic mother and father figures for Everybody in Braj, after all, it's a it's a village, and motherhood is shared, fatherhood is shared, and so on and so forth. And uh, and Nanda, of course, um, that kingdom of the cowards, which we will enter and uh, take birth in the Prakat Leela, um, being the king, he's the central uh, central figure. Of course, his kingship, if you will, is is not uh, the royalty uh, it's, it, uh, of the Kshatriyas and um, all that goes with that, if you will, but uh, it's relative to his status um, as a cowherd. Thus, he attends um, dutifully to the cowherd responsibilities. It sets an example in that regard. And... Um, And he shares, I guess you could say, he shares his uh, considerable wisdom with, uh, with, um, with everyone. Um, he is, uh, as we know, he's the middle son of five sons. And um, while his father appropriately crowned the eldest of the sons, Upananda, um, as his successor, which is customary. The first act of Upananda as the king 
of the um, coward community was to remove the crown from his own head and place it on Nanda Maharaj and crown him as the king. And in doing so, uh, state that after all, I am only an Upa Nanda, Upa meaning here in this case, a small Nanda in comparison. And everyone in the community was uh, overjoyed with um, and agreed with his act. Well, he was a perfect king himself, Upananda. Um, and his perfection is in the one act that he performed as a king, crowning uh, Nanda Maharaj. So we have a king. Um, and uh, he's the ideal uh, example of uh, fatherhood. And uh, we encounter in the text of the uh, Bhagavad, at this time in his life, he and Yashoda Mai are quite um, elderly. Mm -hmm. um, Jiva Goswami is given a nice explanation of, of this. Um, it's not customary, that is to say, that uh, one will wait as long as Nanda and Yashoda did to conceive of, of a son. Um, but there were mitigating circumstances that um, caused them to be at a ripe age, an elderly, I should say, um, at the time of uh, Krishna's birth, which was. Um, a cause of concern for each of them and for the whole uh, community, because the success, really, of the uh, of, of the uh, of the uh, of the family that is fruitful. It's it's completed, if you will, by having children, but in the ordinary sense, in the human-like sense, and uh, for a king to have a son who would be a successor uh, makes his. Uh, his uh, reign, if you will, uh, complete uh, or perfect, successful. So it was a concern to everybody in the community that none doesn't have a son. It started to be whispered, <laughs> none doesn't have a son. What you know? What's 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 the problem? And in a perfect um, community, if you will, um, this was the only um, underlying apprehension, underlying. Um, anxiety and pervaded the community. And as the years went on, it intensified. And this, of course, is um, an example of how the Prakat Leela, the manifest Leela um, in our midst on earth is uh, characterized in an overarching sense by separation. Mm -hmm. So by separation, the heart grows fonder. Separation culminates in 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 the intensity of of union. So here, um, everyone's born in the lila. Everyone, all the um, save for uh, but Nanda doesn't have a son. Of course, Vishwanath doesn't have a daughter yet, but uh, that will happen shortly thereafter. Um, at, at this point. Um, of course, Balaram is eight days earlier. He's not the direct son of Nanda. He's the son substantially, uh, along with Krishna, being raised uh, as he was by Nanda Maharaj. But um, technically, biologically, if you will, um, still Nanda did not have a son. So um, everyone is participating the kingdom couldn't be more uh, perfect, but at the same time, this is a huge problem, <laughs> a huge problem for everyone uh, that is building, building over, over the years. Hmm? Um, none that doesn't have a son. So this, uh, as I say, is an example, one example of how separation is prominent in the Prakat Lila, whereas union is the prominent feature of the uppercut uh, Leela. And the reason for Nanda's uh, 
Nanda not having a son, Nanda Yasoda was that every time Nanda thought to conceive, he thought of a son, of conceiving, of having a son who would be more beautiful in form, have uh, more excellence in qualities, and that his play, um, his Leela would exceed that of God, of Narayan. Um, and he, of course, is a worshiper of Narayan in the form of Narasimha in his home, the deity of Narasimha resides, who is pretty extraordinary himself. Some could say oh, that, uh, that the, the extraordinary form and qualities and leelas of, of Nisringa um, stand out uh, considerably. But uh, in his mind, um, when these thoughts came to him, he checked them, found himself thinking in that way, then checked himself, maybe thinking even that he had offended his god, uh, Narayan. Mm -hmm. um, to, to, to think, I mean, how is it possible? And, and thus uh, checking himself, uh, then he, he, he lost the impetus to conceive. And it wasn't until after quite some time that the two, Nanda and Yashoda, shared notes. And, that, and Nanda found out Yashoda was experiencing the same. rather than aesthetics, monks, and so forth, whose lifestyle is more conducive to austerities. Um, they commit the pleasure of Narayan. And, um, and, and, and of course, after the year's time, um, Narayan was pleased with them, appeared before them, and granted them a boon to have a son. And as it turned out, of course, well, it, Um, and <laughs> and so um, here we find uh, uh, that, the, that, the, that the, the son has been born. Of course, uh, uh, the community, of course, in the, in the course of a year now from that time, it would be here many months is anticipating um, Nanda will have a son, Nanda will have a son, and so forth. And here we find him, we can um, look uh, back here now and return to the verse itself. Uh, Nanda's Tvatmaja Utpane. Here, um, a very small but significant um, uh, word is inserted in the first line. Um, in my translation, it, it, it doesn't seem small, and it's not supposed to be, but some have thought that the word two here, maybe it's just used to uh, complete the meter or what's the necessity of it and so forth. But our, our excellent uh, Gaudiya commentators on the Bhagavatam have drawn from this um, significant uh, insight, Nanda, we were going to enter Nanda on the other hand, or however, to Nanda's to Atmaja Utpane. Jatalado Mahamana. Uh, Nanda's his character in general is described. Nanda, his name, which means bliss. Mahamana means uh, that his mind was broad, it was high, noble minded. A big hearted, these are all ways of um, understanding um, um, these words, uh, describing him, uh, very, uh, you know, not to say broad minded, generous, accommodating, high minded, noble. Um, uh, it's said here that, uh, however, the high minded, noble, uh, broad-minded um, um, 
Nanda Maharaj had his broad and high mind, his soft heart, uh, uh, his mind re uh, reached new heights, exploded, if you will, alado, exploded in, in joy at the birth of his son. However, Nanda, however, upon experiencing the birth of his son, um, his mind, a broad mind, uh, exploded in, 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 in the ecstasy of Vatsalya Bhav. It's said that the uh, son, the father is born again as the son. So here we, we find that to be the case. The Nanda thought, it looks to me like I have a son, but on the other hand, it looks as if joy itself has been, has been born. The Vatsalya Bhav of Nanda Maharaj and, and the object of that Vatsalya, uh, Krishna appearing now to him in a Prakat Lila for the first time, um, his son, more we'll, we'll say Raj, that much. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt but you have been breaking up a little bit getting on and off i don't know if there's anything you can do on oh, your side. there's something i can do about that i'm very sorry about that okay that'd be great Hello. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was speaking about Nanda Maharaj <laughs> um, and his uh, virtues and so forth. I, I guess I was breaking up, so maybe, maybe you didn't hear all of it. But um, in brief, we explained that he is a king, but king of the cowards. So it's not, he's not an ordinary king. Down to earth, so to speak, in many respects. He would share his wisdom, set a good example. Um, personally taking care of the cows himself and so forth. He's the perfect father figure. The Bhagavatam uh, introduces us to him to remedy um, our problems with our own father <laughs> and our problems of being a father ourself by way of not just setting another example that we could follow, which would be good, but um, inviting us into the Leela, um, where he is the paradigmatic father figure for everyone for all gopis and gopas um then i proceeded to explain um that at uh, this time in nanda's life the birth of krishna is quite old um and there are reasons for this um that being that he wanted to have a son that was more beautiful and qualified than than god which um was a rather strange um thought for a praka vaishnav worshiper of narayan he almost thought I would, he must be offending Narayan, and therefore he lost his impetus to uh, conceive. And this went on for year after year after year until he shared notes with Yashoda, who was having the same experience. And this long period also, that it took many, many years before Nanda had a son, is an example of the separation that uh, is prominent or per pervades uh, prominent, is the prominent feature of the uppercut of the Prakat Lila. The Aprakat Lila is characterized by union, the Prakat Lila by separation. So the implication is all the inhabitants of Braj were concerned and they had, although a perfect situation, a, a, a kind of gnawing anxiety that increased as the years went on because Nanda was not having a son. Without having a son, how his own family life would be successful and his kingdom, who would he pass it on to and so forth? Who would be there? You know, who would be the prince, who would be the king, who would succeed him, and so forth. So this, this is, again, separation that's, that's bringing about the union in the form, in this case, of the birth of Krishna. So, um, so here, Nanda Maharaj, Nanda Stuatmaja 
Utpane Jataladu Mahamana. He's described as Mahamana, means he's very broad-minded, soft-hearted, big heart, noble-minded, um, and so forth. But here it is said that uh, Nanda, however, uh, upon the birth of his son, thought that joy itself had been uh, had taken birth. Bliss itself had taken birth. It's said that the father is born again as the son. Mm-hmm. Indeed, here is the case. So the Batsalya Prem, that uh, now Nanda is experiencing full on in the, in, the, in, 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 in the presence of the object of that Prem, his son is actually born. But that son and that Batsalya Prem that his mind is exploding with, they're one. Hmm? They're one. <laughs> So the father has, has taken birth again as the son. His bliss, in other words, um, has taken birth. And that bliss in the form of his son will exceed his own bliss. As it is hoped for by the father that his son will exceed him in excellence and, and carrying on the family tradition and so on and so forth. As the guru hopes that the disciple will exceed him or her in it. In, um, In Krishna consciousness and uh, sharing that uh, wealth of Krishna consciousness with others. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, here, again, uh, summarizing what I already said, I'll continue. Nandas tu atmaja utpane. So um, uh, the word tu is significant. Uh, it's significant for Gaudi of Vaishnavas who we, we won't find this in other commentaries by um, other uh, sampradayas who think it's uh, superfluous, the word too. Um, but they um, have focused on it and um, understood it to be a reference to chapter three. And we're here in chapter five. Um, chapter four describes how uh, Krishna's sister uh, appeared before uh, Kamsa and um, put the fear of God in his heart, if you will. But chapter three uh, is a description of Vasudev's experience at the birth of uh, Vasudev Krishna, Devaki Nandan, in the prison house of Kamsa. So here, what our acharyas have said is that Nanda's experience, however, hmm, the implications was different than that of Vasudev. Vas- Vasudev's experience was that God was born as a son because he appeared, for example, uh, with four arms full of ornamented and decorated and crowned and so on and so forth. Not exactly how you would expect to see, you know, the, uh, the, the, the child in the maternity ward. Mm-hmm. Um, so with Aishvarya, which corresponds with the bhav of, but of Vasudev and Devaki. Krishna in Mathura is the Vaibha Prakash of Krishna in Vrindavan. In Vrindavan, the Vaibha Prakash of Krishna, of course, is Balaram, but he expands in Mathura in another Vaibha Prakash as Maturesh Krishna, um, as, as I say, Devaki Nandan, Krishna. So they want to make uh, the point here that there's a difference in the bhava of Nanda Maharaj and that of um, Vasudev. And therefore, there's a difference in the object of their love. Mm -hmm. And of the two, the object of Nanda's love exceeds that in excellence uh, if you will, of the uh, object of uh, Vasudev's love, Vasudev Krishna, Devaki's love, Devaki Nandan Krishna. He, Krishna, the Krishna of Braj, the Krishna of Nanda, the, the actual, if you will, miss the emphasis here in this verse, the actual son of Nanda is, um, is Swayam Bhagavan. Hmm? Um, and he, in contrast to Vasudev Krishna, corresponds with the measure, in this instance, for example, of Vatsalya, 
that we find in um, the Brudge, which exceeds that of uh, the Vatsalya Bhav in Mathura. When Krishna showed himself to uh, Vasudev to be God himself, if you will, uh, the, it caused the Vatsalya Bhav to, to shrink. Hmm? But we find going forward, of course, in the Brajalila, not in this verse, but going forward in the many instances in which Krishna uh, shows, exhibits Aishvarya dealing with um, predicaments and circumstances, the henchmen of Kamsa and so forth, uh, the lifting of Govardhan Hill. Uh, Nanda is resorted to by the elderly um, cowherds uh, to like, uh, answer. <laughs> uh, uh, how is it that uh, you know he's just your son and he's and, and, and he's doing these things? It, it, it's almost as if some of the elder cowards, although they also have Vatsalya Bhav, their Vatsalya Bhav does not reach this. This it's not of the same measure of Nanda Maharaj. After all, I say Nanda second only to to Yasoda in Vatsalya Bhava. So the other Vatsalya Bhaktas, hmm, they have him as the him and Yasoda as the paradigmatic examples of Vatsalya Bhav. Hmm. Rohini would be like, you know, third, if you will. These are the big three, right? Nanda, Yasoda, Rohini, right there, taking care of Krishna day, day and night, if you will. So when Krishna exhibits some Aishvarya and it brings a question in the minds of the other elders. Is he just, you know, your son? As we feel, and and we feel about him as if he's our son, in a in a village type of sense. Where, as I say, there are more mothers and fathers of every son. Every mother and father is the father and mother of every son, uh, and uh, and uh, and every daughter. Um, um, it's almost as if their Baba is slightly being threatened by by the Aishvarya, uh, a glaring examples of which we have. For example, the lifting of Govardhan, well, that's a very gla fairly glaring uh, example. So Nanda is resorted to, again and again, to, to settle the situation, resolve it, to, to keep them, uh, push back uh, their, uh, on the Aishvarya and, and cement them, if you will, uh, in their Vatsalya Bhav. I don't mean to say that they're losing their Vatsalya Bhav, but comparatively, his is exceeding, so he can come up with the come up with the answers hmm? um, and uh, refer back, of course, to what was said in the cow shed by um, uh, Gargacharya when the name giving ceremony was performed. He was there alone with Nanda. Everyone else was busy. It was a secret event, as we heard on um, all the important. So he heard the words of Gargacharya, who said, "Well, your son will be." Uh, like Narayan. Of course, the implication from the Brudge point of view is, but Narayan is not like Krishna. <laughs> Krishna may have qualities of Narayan, he may be like him, but Narayan is not like Krishna. No. Uh, the qualities of Narayan can be found in Krishna. That's true, but Krishna's qualities, they cannot be found in Narayan. Hmm? Krishna's too, Bhagavan, Swayam. So Nanda championing the cause, if you will, he comes up. By the strength of his bhava, he comes up with the reasoning, right? Mm -hmm. Of Krishna's two Bhagavan Swam in Braj language, if you will, relative to the circumstances. Mm -hmm. He'll cite uh, again what, what uh, Gargacharya said, or he'll uh, insightfully say, yes, it's true, he did that and so forth and so on. It looks like he's God, but, you know, God doesn't steal. And, <laughs> And behave and misbehave, um, and 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 cites various human-like activities of Krishna that everyone's acquainted with, which causes them all to go, yeah, of course, <laughs> right, <laughs> and the issue is solved. So this is his shastra yukti. This is his shastra nipun, right? Is what it means to be a, a scriptural. Uh, genius to come up with these kind of one-liners that settle settle a, a very uh, interesting and perplexing theological um, 
uh, issue, if you will, settle it for the minds of all the elders in Braj. Um, the gopas, the young gopas on the other end, they don't need the issue to be settled. They have their own their own reasoning, experiencing Krishna as they do in, for the better part of his uh, displays of Arshvarya on a, on a da daily basis. So, uh, <laughs> so, uh, so, so Nanda Maharaj, his bhava explained here is different than that of um, uh, Vasudev's and the difference is considerable in that his vatsalya exceeds that and therefore the object of his vatsalya, the object of his parental love ex arguably exceeds in excellence that of the object of um, Vasudev's love. Therefore, Braj Krishna must be the source of uh, Maturesh Krishna, the Lord of Mathura. And that's not how uh, the general public, and by that I mean general uh, community of Vaishnavas through different sampradayas will tend uh, to look at what the Bhagavatam says. Um, the more widely understood and accepted idea is that Krishna is the son of Devaki and he's the foster son of Nanda Maharaj. Um, he's the son of Devaki and Asadev. He was brought across the Jamuna at the night in exchange for the daughter and so forth. So that's the general understanding. But the Godias, uh, our Godia charts labor um, and it's, uh, it's, it seems effortless on their part, but they labor kind of academically, if you will, again and again to demonstrate through grammat, through uh, explanations of the grammar in the Bhagavatam, that what's really being said here, if you look closely, is that Krishna is actually the son of Nanamarsha. And that, 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 that is something that's done in this verse here. First, in the first two lines, by way of saying, however, two, the implication being, there's a difference here, as I've explained, between what Nanda experienced and what Vasudev experienced. Hmm? And of course, then they go on to say that in his ecstasy, Nanda Maharaj called the Brahmins to uh, Ahu, Vipran, Veda Gyan, who are knowledgeable of all, of all the Vedas, Snata, Suchir, Alankrita, um, after having bathed himself, uh, Suchi being pure, Alankrita. I go into some explanation of, of that. And we, but they called the Brahmins to perform the Jatakarma ceremony. The Jatakarma ceremony is a ritual in which, which is performed right after the birth, overseen by the father who, who takes uh, uh, some uh, ghee and uh, maybe, uh, let's see, barley powder, rice powder, and places it on the tongue of the child chants the appropriate prayers hmm, in this way to uh, um, ensure prosperity uh, for the child. And after that ritual is performed, then the umbilical cord can be cut. Hmm. So you just might pass over this, of course, but they're very astute and they say, well, if this ceremony is performed, hmm, well, that was not performed by Vasudev. He had no opportunity to do that with a four-armed son all decked out with ornaments and crowned and, 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 and so forth. They, they, their Bhatsalya Rasa uh, uh, receded, as I said, and beautiful prayers in that chapter three of the 10th canto uh, are offered by Vasudev and Devaki. We're not finding Nanamaraj offering these kind of prayers. His mind is exploding in ecstasy. And he says, oh my God, such a beautiful son, call the Brahmins. Let's perform the, 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 the appropriate uh, rituals to ensure that his, his prosperity and his success, uh, his good health, uh, um, and so on and so forth. Um, so it's a, it, it's a very uh, considerable uh, contrast in, in, the, in terms of the two Babas. And again, technically speaking, well, why would there be a 
cutting of the umbilical cord ceremony. If he was not the son, we would think more, more recently, well, there was no umbilical cord to cut for, for Vasudev, but uh, at least it appeared like there was one <laughs> for Pranana Maharaj and he performed the ceremony. Hmm? Some say, well, there really wasn't. It's an extraordinary case from the lotus. Lotus comes on a stem, but here was a lotus without a stem. <laughs> uh, but but not, nonetheless, he performed the ritual, hmm? um, which is the indication that, that, if you will, Krishna is actually the son. They're bringing it down to kind of like a biological perspective, right? From that point of view. Of course, I was asked the other day by uh, Satru Maharaj, to uh, who uh, through one of his disciples on behalf of him, to weigh in on the fact that Prabhupada, in his uh, Krishna book, refers to Krishna as the foster son of Nanda Maharaj, whereas the Gaudi Acharyas emphasize this point by citing examples like this and other grammatical, uh, other grammar and other verses demonstrating. Uh, insightfully that Krishna is actually the physical, if you will, the biological, <laughs> if you will, son of, of Nanda Maharaj. So I explained uh, in my reply um, that um, it's a complicated theological issue. And while previous acharyas have had the time and an appropriate audience, if you will, to go into such details and pull them out and demonstrate from a, a kind of, a, as, I, as I say, a physical or biological point of view, Krishna is actually the son of Nanda Maharaj. Uh, Prabhupada uh, perhaps uh, didn't feel his audience was uh, such that he could go into such, that it was necessary, I would say, to go into such um, details, um, which could come out later. And then, of course, they have. Hmm? Um, now, that part of the answer probably wasn't liked too much, but I went, went on to say that um, because uh, Prophet's disciples like to think of, he didn't hold anything back, he gave, told them everything, but there's, there's, you can never say enough about Krishna. You can never, uh, no commentary on the Bhagavatam can be, you know, complete, that more cannot be said, and so on and so forth. And this is, of course, um, underscored in, in, in Prabhupada's teachings as well. Um, but um, although the point here is interesting and charming, and it's beautiful how the Acharyas have brought this out, and so on and so forth, I've always looked at it, and I think appropriately so, to be, well, it is a little technical and it is, it is a little unnecessary because in substance, the fact of the matter is that even if you look at Krishna as the foster son of Nanda Maharaj, he is the son of Nanda Maharaj more in every respect than he is the son of Vasudeva and Devaki. He, his, his childhood, his infancy, his childhood, his boyhood and his youth, which is the time, uh, by, the, by the time he reaches adolescence, he's out of the house, hmm, if you will. <laughs> he's out of the house and he's gone now to Mathura. Hmm? So what opportunity is there for Vasudev to be his father in the, in, in, in the full sense of the term who raised him? The father raised us. He's already raised in Mathura. He's, the, he's now... Of course, yeah, he's going to get an education in the Gurukul from Sunday Pani Muni, but he is he has defeated Kamsa, he's defeating Jarasandha, he's taking everybody in Mathura to Dwarka, he's got a celestial city there where it's that's been manifest by the gods and to uh, glorify him and so on and so forth. So, you know, uh, when you grow up, you get out of the house and you're on your own and so forth, your relationship with your father um, changes. The early days, the childhood, the bringing up, this is all done by Nanda Maharaj. Hmm? We have the example of Balaram himself, who, 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 who is the literal, if you will, son of Vasudev, raised by Nanda Maharaj. And although he's, no one can dispute the fact that he's the son of Vasudev, he himself, right to the face 
of Vasudev told him, as we heard during in Bal Baladev Purnim, he told him, when he went to Bal Vasudev and said, give Krishna and myself permission to return to Braj. Hmm? Vasudev said, well, you can go, but, but Krishna can't go. He said, how can you say I can go and Krishna can't go? We are both one. Hmm? We're both the same. I'm also the son of Nanda Maharaj. I mean, can you imagine that? He's telling it to Vasudev. I'm also the son of, of who's his father. I'm also the son of Nanda Maharaj. And of course, Nanda can't, can't, um, can't deny that. Hmm? Um, when Devaki, another instance, when Devaki meets with, uh, with Krishna and Balaram at Kurukshetra, hmm? I mean, at, that's during the Rathiyatra, right? Kurukshetra, they're there. It's a huge festival. They set up like an Olympic city, you know, for the, for the, for the festival. And Vasudeva and Devaki are there and, uh, and all the entourage of uh, sages and sadhus and brahmins and the royalty and Krishna and Balaram riding on elephants uh, uh, and, and so on and so forth. And here come these coward people uh, with covered wagons, you know, coming to the gate and, and, and you, you showed us this, I'd like a ticket <laughs> to get in. Who are you, the gate scene? I'm the mother of the, of the guy in there that you think is God. <laughs> It's, of course, they, 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 his son is, he's the son of Devaki. This is the general understanding. He's the son of, here he's showing, in the Dwarka leader of the material, he's showing the godhood. Hmm? This is understandable. When he speaks Upanishadic wisdom and so on and so forth, but when he, the more human-like he acts, the more difficult he is to understand. That is the aprakrita. Hmm? Apraka, aprakata. Uh, it looks like, it looks in every respect like he looks in every respect like an ordinary human, but but he's not. It's hard to hard to catch, right? Um, of course, then word seeps in, and Devaki says, "Let her in, let her in." And right, right, right there, she she acknowledges, "You are the real mother, none of the real father." What is our position in in comparison? So these these statements are there. These implication the implications are there in the verses in our excellent. Uh, um, commentaries of, of, um, on the Bhagavatam from the Gaudi Acharyas, you know, bring this out. Prabhupada didn't labor on this particular point, but in, in, a, in a broader sense, given his audience and the breadth of his um, pursuit, wide circulation of Gaudi Vaishnavism, he didn't seem to think it was necessary at the time, and it doesn't really matter in a sense because from a substantial point of view, it's obvious that Krishna is the son of Nanda. Even if he was born of Devaki, he is the son of Yasoda and Nanda. As I said before, uh, uh, your own son may be disobedient and the neighbor's son may, be, may just take a liking to you more than his own father. And the neighbors will say, he's really your son. Um, uh, one of my disciples once said, it seems to me that like this blood relationship that you have to love your bread relationships more than others seems very arbitrary. I like that point. <laughs> uh, uh, let affection uh, and, uh, rule, right? We, we feel bound to love our brothers and sisters more than someone else, but we may not. <laughs> they may not uh, 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 bring that out from us um, to the same extent that others do. So such is the situation with Krishna, but nonetheless here, um, this point is uh, brought out by our acharyas that the, that here the the, the jata karma, the uh, 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 this birth ritual is uh, performed. Therefore, he must be the son of Nanda Maharaj, hmm? who here is described very nicely. He said it says snata suchir alangrita. He called the Brahmins. Hmm? And from here, we've gone now from Vatsalya Prem, which is the height, right? The Braj Prem, a form of Braj Prem, Vatsalya Prem, and the pinnacle, uh, practically speaking, of, of this Vatsalya Prem, Nanda and Yasoda, all the way down now with the, with the uh, uh, Jatakarma ceremony to Varnashram. <laughs> the whole... We, we often say, oh, and Bhakti steps on the head of, of Varnashram and so on and so forth. That's just one way of talking about it. But um, it's actually a very beautiful um, and important uh, 
um, perspective, if you will, social religious um, system. Krishna says after all, it comes from him. It's a social religious system by which, um, when it's properly uh, conducted and understood, many, many secrets will be revealed about what's out there. Hmm? Um, it's, 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 it's a social religious system that connects us with nature, humans with nature, and, uh, and um, it lifts the veil of our perception as to what's out there. We can't see entirely what's out. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll go into that a little bit more, but here, it, 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 the, what is the proper understanding of, of Varnashram? Bhakti Thakur used the term Daiva Varnashram. What he meant by that in one sense was that the Daiva Varnashram, as explained in the seventh canto of the Bhagavatam, is a social religious system in which, which is centered on, of course, the pleasure of Vishnu, which acknowledges that Vishnu is more pleased by bhakti than simply by the observance of the social religious system of Varnashram, which also pleases him. But the pleasure of Hari that derives from uh, observance, strict, dutiful uh, observance of Varnashram is something like uh, they have the thing in my country here in the United States, they have a, like, a, I think a press, maybe it's called a presidential award or something like that, that one citizen of the country every year gets the presidential award, gets noticed by the president as, as an excellent citizen who followed the system and did something wonderful um, thereby and so forth. So, you know, he comes one day, he gives him the garland, he gets noticed, he gets an award, and so forth, but the pleasure that the president derives and the sense in which, the extent to which he's bonded with that citizen um, is far exceeded by his own intimate uh, family members, his cabinet members even, uh, his vice president, what to speak of his wife, his children, his intimate friends and so on, which don't disappear when he or she become, becomes the president. So. Uh, and Dharma, of course, the Bhagavatam, right, um, uh, rightfully says, Samsidhi Haritoshnam. Dharma is determined, its excellence, adherence to it, um, by the extent to which Hari is pleased. Mm -hmm. So, Varnashram is about pleasing Hari, and that Varnashram that does not, which was the case now largely at the time of Bhakti Vinod, did not recognize the status of Vaishnavism hmm, as superior to itself in terms of a dharma, a path for pleasing Bhagwan. He called this the Sura Varnashram. And there are other extended ways he may have used the term as well. But as the Bhagavatam explains, that Varnashram that understands the the status of Vaishnavism, this, this, is, the, this is the actual Varnashram system. Um, so it's all about pleasing Hari. Hari is so pleased with Nanda Maharaj that, that God, Hari, is taking birth as his son. I mean, it's just incredible <laughs> to think about. That's not going to happen <laughs> by adherence to Varnashram. If by ad adherence to Varnashram, uh, one uh, also worships Hari Vishnu, which is part of the Varnashram. Um, it's possible that as a result of that, because some bhakti is there in Varnashram, by that bhakti, more bhakti, it will beget more bhakti. And when we'll come to the bhakti marg, vaidi marg, um, that is to say. Um, um, but of course, our rag bhakti is different than that. That can only come to us through Mahakripa. Hmm? by coming in touch with those who, in that line and so forth, such as the mercy, the grace of, of our, our Gaudiya, um, available through our Gaudiya Sampradaya. But anyway, the point here is that we've, we've, we, the, the, these two 
from highest end to the lowest end, if you will, on the religious spectrum are found in the verse. And I'm just kind of making a connection between them, of course, in the context of the Leela, there's a connection because this is the social religious system within the Leela. Hmm? But here, uh, Nanda Maharaj is described, Nanda Suji or Lankrita, but he had, by the, he had, of course, he was in the cow sheds uh, uh, with the cows when the maidservant came out and indicated by holding flowers and fruits that so through sign language, if you will, and body language, and, and that which he was bearing, that a son was born and none noticed. And of course, then he came uh, with the elderly cowards and said, who is that? Like, you give, give her, you know, give her husband all these cows, all these cows that are similar that we know, they're all going to give to the husband and ask her whatever she wants, you know, I will, will give her. And then he went and took his bath and, uh, and, um, dressed himself appropriately for the occasion and so on and so forth. But inside these words, we also find um, the point that I'm raising with regard to the position of Varnashram um, in relation to Vaishnavism. Snata Suchi Lankrita. So he bathed and he was Suchi. Hmm? Suchi means that he was pure. Hmm? That means he put on Vaishnav Tilak. Hmm? And Alankrita, he was ornamented uh, he had he put on ornaments, that's true, but he was also ornamented by the sattvika bhavas of his vatsalya, hmm, uh, praying for Krishna, his ecstasies, decorating him. Hmm, pure, suchi. It means he was a pure Vaishnav, hmm, and therefore he, he, the Brahmins did what he asked. He wasn't a big, powerful king who would cut off their head if they didn't uh, obey for example, uh, as it is in a, 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 a Kshatriya um, kingdom, hmm? he's not, as I said earlier, he's not that, that kind of a king, but the power of his purity and his Vaishnavism hmm, brought, uh, uh, allowed him to call the Brahmins in that, and, and, and they came to perform the appropriate um, ceremonies. He himself was so overwhelmed with bliss that he couldn't even participate fully in terms of his role in such um, Vedic uh, uh, and Varnashram, if you will, procedures. Mm -hmm. um, they had to do that. They could see more readily that Krishna was God. Mm -hmm. To some extent, they could see that given their, their vantage point. But Nanda Maharaj could, could, could not see that. So he needed their uh, uh, assistance and they were in awe of the sensibilities, the ecstatic sensibilities of Nanda Maharaj now in the, again, in the presence of the perfect object of his love and exhibiting a very extraordinary Vatsalya Bhav that takes us far beyond, as I say, where you could arrive by bar, by Barnashram, or where these uh, uh, Brahmins they're in the Aprakat, they're in the Prakat Leela, so their status is not necessarily that of the Nityasiddha, if you will. Um, so they anyway they they under his direction, at his behest, with him unable, in in overwhelmed in ecstasy to to do even his own role, they performed the role and gave the various blessings um, and so on and so forth and and. Again, now, um, the, the, the beauty, if you will, of the Varnashram, as I was saying earlier, is that these rituals uh, that they performed, mantras that they recited, and prayers, and so on and so forth, these are not just some superstitious uh, rites as they may be dismissed in modern culture. No, uh, that, 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 that's not what they are. Um, they are a way of communicating with nature. We in modern society have lost the ability to communicate with nature. Man, humanity, I should say, is in a abnormal, a very abnormal condition, hmm? separated from nature, unable to communicate with nature, uh, exploiting nature for uh, just a, a life of extravagance, if you will. Mm -hmm. consumerism um, um, 
and arguably at, at, at the cost of um, um, the habitability that nature on earth is providing given the present day environmental crisis that we, that we face. Um, but there's a kind of an angst in human society um, of purpose, for, for want of purpose and meaning. Hmm? They've done a very unnatural thing, humans. Hmm? Since the time of the scientific revolution in Europe, hmm, humans have started to posit the idea, which is prominent, very prominent philosophical and so-called scientific insight has been up until recently today uh, that, that, for example, time, everything is contained within time and space. The standalone reality is time and space and everything fits within that and arises out of that. Hmm? So consciousness, for example, is, is, is thought to arise out of time and space. And as a result, it can be reduced to just time and space, physical properties. Hmm? This is a very um, insane idea, but it's a result of this separating humans from, from nature. Um, uh, and it's a good example of how meat sense of meaning, the search for meaning hmm, is um, on and there is reasoning that there is no meaning and that people act as if there is no meaning and there are no consequences um, uh, ultimately uh, for, our, for our actions. Um, so what am I saying in all this? I'm, I'm saying that, that if empirically speaking, hmm, uh, the evidence is that the, the, that what we have and what we know, what we know is experience. We're born as children, what do we have? We have only experience. This is foundational. We have experience, and then we begin to describe our experience, report on the experience, talk about the experience, all of that fits within experience. Hmm? Instead of experience fitting within time and space, time and space are only a description of what we're experiencing. And now you may know that in modern science, the startling result, um, uh, a startling result is that if you take quantum field theory and if you take the theory of relativity, and you try to reconcile the two of them, you, the, one of the conclusions that scientists have come to is that time and space are not the fundamental reality. There is something that's something other than time and space that everything fits within. Hmm? They are arising out of something else. What it is, now this is, turns the whole table you know, upside down. For 200 years, this has been taught, time and space is the fundamental reality. Although we're born only with experience hmm, as the reality, they conjecture that there's something else other than experience, which is now a, this is a, a metaphysical assumption. That something else is called matter, hmm, and it's qualitative, and it's the standalone reality. Everything arises out of that. Even the experience that we have that allows us to describe it, it's, it's insane. It's actually in, an insanity. Mm -hmm. uh, to a large extent, and 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 now, oh, it's 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 in question. Not only in question, it's de been demonstrated scientifically that time and space are not the fundamental reality. So, what is the fundamental reality? Why don't we revert back to consciousness as the fundamental reality, which is what the Vedanta says in all of its forms, again and again and again, and which is empirically spearing speaking, our direct experience that everything is, well, everything is arising out of experience. Experience being the heart, if you will, of consciousness, being qualitative in nature. So how this all relates here to what, I'm, what we're talking about, of course, is that Varnashram, of course, makes this point that the world out there is, the, is an expression of the mind of God. We're living in the mind of God, in the dream of Vishnu. Hmm? That's where we are. Matter, yes, 
Matter is different than consciousness, but it's more consciousness-like than not, hmm? because it derives from the mind of God. That's what it is, an expression, and a particular expression we call the Maya Shakti of the mind of God. And as such, behind the macrocosm, in terms of light, air, water, and so forth, all these things that we require are required to live that, that make it the, the planet habitable and, and so on and so forth. There are what we call Dayunatrena, there are godly factors, partial manifestations of the divinity of the Godhead within his own mind. We call them devas, gods, goddesses, and so forth. And we look out the window of our eyes and we can't see them. Hmm? And we think, oh, that's a silly idea. Hmm. A silly idea. Well, what's a silly idea is that time and space is the fundamental reality and it's qualitative in nature and experience is some unnecessary separate thing. Uh, and if we explain it at all, it's something experienced that rises out of non-experience. It's qualitative experience that it rises out of quantitative reality. This is it's just math does not does not work. That is a crazy idea. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we can't see with our naked eye or feel with our sense, tactile sense alone and so on and so forth, what's actually out there, what's actually going on, that's that's the that's what we say is Maya does. We can't, it's out there. We can't see exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. This should not be hard to, um, to, to, to understand. And so how will we understand that? How will we see the more? This is very much what the Barnashram is about. All these rituals and mantras and so on, they're meant to reveal, they're meant to re have to acknowledge that on the macrocosmic level, there, there, there is a, a godly factor hmm? that we're dependent upon sun, dependent upon wind, dependent upon water. And, you know, this will become, become more apparent by force of, of, this, of the direction in which human society has been going, unfortunately. Um, and it, it'll probably bring people to worship, um, uh, which they tend to do in, in, in times of need. Um, um, but the Varnashram is a system to, by which, once again, petitioning the god, goddesses through, as they say, through, uh, through symbolism, uh, ritual, poetry, music, um, and non, um, non and I want to say like non-rational, I mean, not by the force of reason alone, but by something that, that has the power to take us in the direction beyond the limits of reason. Mm -hmm. Of course, all derived as it is, their, their rituals and whatnot from the Veda, they're meant to uh, lift, to, to, to give us a clearer picture of what's going on and and the fact that there are deities hmm. there there god is represented in 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 different ways and ultimately um these gods these goddesses if you will are partial manifestations of the supreme so we, supreme being. so we come gradually from varnashram to vaidhi bhakti and if we're of course we're not varnashramis we have no hope for that hmm. our hope lies in Mahat Kripa, in Sadhu Sangha. And fortunately, we have the Sadhu Sangha and the Ragamarg. So we will exceed, we can, we can transcend, we can, we can attain um, beyond what could be attained, even from the Vaidhi Bhakti that can, can arise out of uh, Varnashram, such as our good fortune. But, and, and in that sense, yeah, we step on the head of Varnashram. But we should be careful, even if we speak strongly about its limitations, not to um, offend that which um, is a social religious system properly understood, ordained by God for the purpose of, of, of connecting humanity with nature and bringing out gratitude on, on our part, which is the first step, if you will, of love, just to just to just say, thank you. Thank you. If you want this, say first say please. So say this mantra, do this ritual. When you get it, you say thank you, as children are taught. So the, the Bhagavad teaches us this. This is this is the beginning. 
of religious life. And the religious life is about love. That's what it's about. If we say that everything is rest in consciousness, consciousness is the source of everything, some foolish person will say, well, what's the source of consciousness? Uh, we would say Krishna, <laughs> Krishna consciousness. And they say, well, what's the source of Krishna? It's a stupid question, of course, but what will we answer? We we'll say Radha. <laughs> so we got all the answers. What's the source of what's the source of, of Radha? Krishna. Mm -hmm. okay. What's the source of, of, of both of them? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He's Rasaraj Mahabhav Duya Guru. He's the two of them. Mm -hmm. At least from our point of view, he's the source of them because they come to us through him and through his um, through his agents, right? Mm -hmm. And 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 for that we come to the to the agents whose 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 who's day today we are celebrating, right? Born on uh, on on, on Dotsava. He knew all these things, not in so many details. Once I <laughs> once I found a National Geographic magazine, I was traveling in a van, distributing books and so forth with some other brahmacharis, and I was a sannyasi at the time. But I found that I came across this magazine. And it was it was a National Geographic issue dedicated to all the latest developments in science. So Prabhupada was always talking about science. I, I hated science in school, um, chemistry particularly. I couldn't stand it. Biology, I was not going to poke a frog. That was not something I could do. So uh, uh, I didn't. Hey, English was my subject. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so anyway. Uh, uh, Prabhupada would talk about science, and he, you know, he talked about it in a very like, um, I mean, he wasn't, a, he was a chemist, but, he, but of sorts, a pharmacist before he joined, practiced it on his mission, um, but he, um, I mean, he wasn't up to date on all the scientific jargon and insights and findings and so forth, which, you know, are, are day by day, it's hard to keep up with them, right? Um, but um, in an overarching sense, he knew they were wrong. He knew that time and space was not the fundamental reality, but the consciousness was. And Krishna consciousness was the, was the full you know, on picture, right? So um, anyway, I sent him the magazine. I wanted an excuse to write to him. You know, I'd write to him every now and then. I had an excuse. Probably here's the latest findings amongst the scientists. You know, I thought you might be interested in it because you're always talking about science. So Prabhupada wrote me back, and I explained him where I was, what I was doing. Prabhupada wrote me back. It's very nice that you're traveling in a van with the brahmacharis and distributing books. Just by this alone, you become perfect, something like that. And then he said, um, um, he put a, after his signature, he ignored what I wrote about the you know substance of what I was writing, sending in the magazine. But then in his own handwriting, um, at the bottom, he put a little asterisk. He said, the, ma the magazine, it is overly materialistic. Like, don't get too involved in all this uh, technical. It, these just the gist of it is this, you know. Now, someone would argue on the basis of technical details against his premise, um, um, but as it comes to pass, well, this, I'm just giving one example. Even science is acknowledging hmm? time and space are not the fundamental reality. So, what is the fundamental reality? Hmm? It's conscious, it's experience, and that is the heart of what consciousness is, and so forth. So he knew these things. Hmm? He knew them, and um, and and he was born in this world to, to to tell us about them in the context of of speaking about the glories of of Nanda Marsh. He was another son in a village sense of the term, hmm? along with Krishna. He is another son of Nanda Maharaj, hmm? a gopa in the community. And born in the Saptagram, extended Saptagram community that was uh, Nityananda Prabhu's own uh, community in West Bengal. But he said he came in the world to, 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 to deliver them, right? And his sense of deliverance was broad. He is the, that person within the Panchatattva who is uh, the best, by in this sense, best because of wide uh, and generous distribution of the dispensation of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Mm -hmm. And Prabhupada, of course, um, embodied that himself in the modern times. Mm -hmm. 
And um, I mean, I'm so blessed to have met him and been initiated by him three times and uh, spoke with him on uh, numbers of occasions and, and been, you know, known by him for my, acknowledged publicly by him for my efforts, the meager as they were to try to, uh, to uh, please him. I have met, um, you know, subsequently uh, after his passing, a number of different sadhus uh, and so on. Um, and uh, also through literature, uh, acquainted myself with other commentaries than his own, which of course during his presence was the only commentary I know and the only, the only example of bhakti that I, I was acquainted with. But after his disappearance, then um, I was afforded other further experience. And um, while I met devotees who were more scholarly than Prabhupada and read commentaries that were more uh, scholarly in, 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 in some respects, the faith of Prabhupada in Harinam and the love for Krishna that he had, not that others didn't have it, but um, it was just so like palpable. Mm -hmm. um, his love for Krishna, um, to, and I mean, I got a chance to witness and to see him in, in the, uh, come uh, day after day, as he used to do in the early days in Los Angeles, day for months at a time, day after day, come in his, his routine after his walk, bow, prostrate himself before the deity, he'd get a flower and throw it down at Gornitai's feet and pay the Dandavats, take the Charnamrita, pay the Dandavats to Radha and Krishna, to Jagannath Swami, mm, to the picture of, big, big picture of Bhagavan Narasimha before he sat on the seat and, uh, and began to sing about them and, and so forth. Um, I mean, his love for Krishna was just a, just like a ward on his sleeve, if you will. I mean, he, he didn't um, exhibit his bhava or um, uh, um, um, weren't, it wasn't in, in, in an appropriate way. He, he always emphasized the philosophy and the books and so forth, rather than some show of mysticism or some show of ecstasy, but um, he could not contain his ecstasy at all times. But besides that, just his very demeanor, his way of talking and thinking that he, uh, about what he was doing and so forth, he, he was just, no one anywhere can, could possibly deny that he loved Krishna. <laughs> people may not, some people may not like Prabhupada's presentation or may not, may criticize it even. We've heard that over the years here and there, but that he loved Krishna, if you want to just use real common sense, no one can argue with that. I mean, it was very, very appropriate that at the time of the installation of the Krishna Balaram deities in Vrindavan, the Vrindavan municipality hmm, uh, voted to name the road from the main road to Delhi, the little road that turn left when you're coming from Delhi, it takes you into Vrindavan, to name it Bhakti Vedanta Marg. That was just like so appropriate. What he did for Vrindavan, hmm? even materially speaking, of course, now, you know, it's, it's, it's reached a point where it's, uh, um, um, some of the things that have done should be, should have been addressed, but, uh, you know, the Dham has its own life, but but so much attention he brought uh, to Vrindavan to all the shopkeepers. He made them wealthy, <laughs> which they wanted. From a, so, from a Varnashram kind of perspective, they worshipped him. They put his picture in 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 the, in the in the shop so that we would buy from them. But they loved Prabhupada for it. I mean, it was a funny thing because you know we'd think, oh, you realize, oh, he's got the picture of Prabhupada there, so that we'll come to the shop. It's true. Hmm? He wanted money, but they actually loved Prabhupada. <laughs> At the same time, they loved him. I mean, for what he did for their family, but they understood that that he was a real, a real, a real devotee of Krishna, a real Brajbasi in the sense in which it's described in in the books and so forth. When he passed from the world, and I wasn't there at the time, but when he was taken through the streets on a palanquin, sitting in, in, and everybody came out from all the shops.
Akshno falam tadusya darshanam hi. It said. Tano falam tadusya gatra sangha. Jiva falam tadusya kirtanam hi. Sudhurva. Bhagavata hi loke. This is, uh, of course, a famous verse. It says that akshno um, falam. The, the perfection of one's sight is to see him. The perfection of, of touch, tanofalam gatrasanga, tatusha gatrasanga, is to touch him, to touch his feet, to, to, to perfection, jivapalam of the tongue, is to glorify him. Sudulava bhagavati bhagavata hiloka. Such a bhagavata is, is very rare to find in this world. And I had that. opportunity to see him, to, to touch him. And, and today, by your, your kindness, the chance to speak about him. And you know, all the things that we've said today about Nanda Maharaj, about Krishna's birth, um, um, the ability to, to, to even enter into such thoughts in, 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 in the slightest at all, uh, for really all of us, whether it's direct disciples or anybody in the Western world, it's all come from, from him and his just his unflinching uh, gurnishta commitment to Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur and his desire, his ambition to fulfill the um, the, the vision of Bhakti Vinod Thakur that that Gaudiya Vaishnavism would be um, put on the main stage of, of in the religious community and it would retire from its uh, philosophy and theology, all the scientific materialism, if you will. Um, <laughs> a devotee that I know who used to be in our Bhakti Parivar, but he was disappointed with his guru who was one of my god brothers and, and he was disappointed for a pretty good reason. He was initiated in another party where he just wrote me a long article um, where he was, he asked my opinion about it, where he was trying to argue in a, in a kind of a modern way, having modern sensibilities and so forth. Gaudiya Vaishnavism, I've got to write him back. I will today. I'm, I'm going to say uh, I, uh, it's nice to see that you still have some um, Bhakti Vinod Paribar in your veins, because that's what, that's what our Paribar does, no other Paribar. As, uh, for Gaudi Vaishnava has, has done that. And Prabhupada was such a big, um, such an extraordinary example of an essential Vaishnava, essential um, sub, substance over form. Krishna in substance in the least or the most is a son of Nanda Maharaj. Maybe in form it may look otherwise. You can, we can argue in pulling out this verse and there, here and there, as I said, but in substance he is. Hmm? So this is the main emphasis of our um, our, our kind of sarugrahi uh, notion of Vaishnavism, um, spoken about by and mandated by um, by Bhaktivedanta Thakur. I said before that at the time of the Copernican Revolution, which is the, really the, the beginning of modern modern science in many respects. Uh, um, those thoughts, those findings were brought, did find their way into India and various um, traditionalists tried to argue with them, compromise with them, uh, harmonize with them in terms of literal uh, understandings of Puranic accounts of nature of the cosmos. Uh, but it's, um, I've done some research on this and um, the, and it's noted that the Vrindavan Goswamis hmm, did not participate in that. They were too busy, as I said, with their own revolution. That revolution being not only that does the world, sun and moon and earth and everything revolve around the Atma, but the Atma is revolving around the Paramatma. They were dealing with that issue. Hmm? Uh, defeating the 
uh, uh, Advaita Vedanta or taking us beyond the limits of Advaita Vedanta. But not only that, that, that the Paramatma is orbiting around Krishna. Krishna's two Bhagavan Swayam. But not only that, properly understood, Krishna's two Bhagavan Swayam. Krishna is orbiting around the love of Radha. This was their preoccupation. But by the time of Bhakti Vinod Thakur, that whole Western notions, um, uh, modernity and its understanding of the world and so forth, had come to the, do the doorstep. It was the headquarters was in Calcutta. Uh, so he dealt with these ideas and we continue to deal with them um, today um, for the um, upliftment of human society in all respects, um, to bring them to the brudge conception where consciousness, which is what life is all about, can reach its fulfillment. What is the consciousness we can ask of consciousness? That is, that is love. That is, um, what do we, what do we mean by Chaitanya? Krishna Chaitanya, that is his name, Krishna Chaitanya, right? And the consciousness of consciousness means the love. Bhakti, the love of Radha and Krishna. So Prabhupada was a great champion of this, and we are indebted to him. I've gone over time, I'm sorry, but um, I'll stop here. Is there any any thoughts anyone would want to share further or questions? It's nice to have the opportunity to speak about this with you. Bande Krishna Nandu Kumar. His name is Krishna. That's later. Gargacharya gave the name Krishna. He's the son. Today he's the son of Nandamarsh. That we know. <laughs> so, all right. Well, that's, who knows what time it is for you. You've been up to midnight wherever you are. <laughs> Most of you. So, uh, I'll be speaking again tomorrow, right? Answering questions. So, because I've gone overboard, maybe you could think about today. It's, talk as well. And if any questions arise from it, you can ask tomorrow or any other questions. I look forward to being with you then.